2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 says, For the love of Christ compels us. What compels us? The love of Christ. So for some of us, this reads, For the lack of money compels us. Or the need of help compels us. But what compels you? What drives you? See, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 once again, For the love of Christ compels us. Because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to him through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ, reconciling the word to himself, not imputing the trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So the word is something you speak. The word is something you preach. And the word of reconciliation. Now then, he says in verse 20, we are ambassadors for Christ. In other words, representatives of Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Why? For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Yes, this is how we are reconciled to Christ. So you and I are compelled to love. We are loved to love. So what drives me? Because I have received the love of Christ, therefore I love. But the reason, the purpose for that love is to love you. So that we read in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 4 where he says, For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died. The Amplified said, For the love of Christ controls and urges and impels us because we are of the opinion and conviction that if one died for all, then all died. Verse 15, And he died for all, so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves but to and for him who died and was raised again for their sake. If you look at this Greek word of compel, it means to hold fast. It means to press together. It means to hold together as a unit, right? It means to sustain, to, to exercise continuous control over something or someone. In other words, it's that that keeps you together. As far as your purpose is concerned. And remember Paul said, he said, one thing I do. He doesn't say two things. It's not three things. It's not four things. He says, one thing I do. And therefore Matthew 22 verse 37 says that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Are these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So love is the glue. Love is the passion. Love is the drive and controlled by love. So we live for love. We live by love. We are controlled by love. That's why it says that God does not love, but God is love. Are you hearing me here? So therefore it means to control, to restrain, to press in so that there is little room for movement. Oh, no, pastor, I don't want to be controlled. Well, if you're a Christian, you're controlled. Well, I want to do what I want to do, when I want, how I want to do it. No, because Paul says the love of God compels me. The love of God controls me. The love of God moves me. So I speak out of love. I do out of love. I walk out of love. I react out of love because I've experienced the love. Say with me, loved to love. So because I am compelled by love, he says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 16, therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh. So we don't judge people, in other words, by what we see in them. The Amplified said we estimate and regard no one from a purely human point of view in terms of natural standards or values. So I don't value 
you based on your education. I don't value you based on your accomplishments. I don't value you on, uh, uh, based on your human on human standards and human wisdom. And that's why God says, I will take the foolish things of the world, the base things of the world, to confound the wise, to stupefy the successful. So if you're cute and successful, God can't use you. If you're accomplished and you've got it all together, God can't use you. So drop the attitude. Come before God and let love compel you. Not getting the little pat on the back, right? And, and therefore, we don't, value, it's not, we don't value according to human values and human standards. We value people, no matter who you are, no matter where they come from, no matter what they've done, we value people. Amen? And that, therefore, once again, 1 Corinthians 5 verse 6 says, Therefore, from now on we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know Him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, where? In Christ. Where? If anyone is where? In Christ. What happens? He is a new creation. But where must you be? In Christ. Where is the value? In Christ. He is a new creation. And the Bible says all the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And as we have been engrafted in Christ, because what happens in Christ is in Christ you receive the new nature. In Christ you receive a new heart, which means your thinking changes, the way you process changes, and where your money used to compel you, and where your success used to compel you, and where you were enslaved by what people say, and that little pat on the back, right, you get out of your BMW, and you're walking with this big attitude, why? Because you, you're looking for that pat on the back of, oh, you've got a nice car. You, you hear what I'm saying? So what, what, what you have does not signify your value. So don't be a slave. See, I'm not compelled. I'm not a slave. I'm not a slave to what people think. I didn't get an education so everybody can say, oh, wow, you. No, I've got an education so that I can be skilled in loving people better. And nothing wrong with driving an expensive car and a nice car. And, uh, but, but your car is there to serve people. It doesn't signify your value. So don't be a slave. So whether there's a doctor in front of your name, a professor in front of your name, or you're just Mr. and Mrs., if there's nothing in front of your name, it doesn't signify your value. Without the title or with the title, you either know or you don't know. Just because you have a title doesn't mean you know stuff. And I don't have an issue with titles. There is protocol and there is respect, right? So for the young people, you need to understand it's not just Joe to you. It is Uncle Joe. There's a title. There is respect. But we don't let our titles, we don't let that determine our value. Because what happens in these days, we are compelled by titles. We are compelled by possessions. We are compelled by education. What? We, no, we are compelled by what? By love. What drives you? Love. And when I reach out to people, you know what, they don't ask me what my title is. They only care that I care. And there's no value in the titles and the degrees and whatever. So to save yourself from putting yourself in that jail, you know, getting up every day thinking you have to prove yourself to people, you know, whether they like you, whether they don't like you, whether, what do you care? Because you are compelled by love because you were first loved by God. And now here's the thing, when you become a new creation, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 18, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Now he gives us, and to all of us, what? A ministry. A ministry of what? And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Every single person in Jesus Christ has a foundational ministry of Christ, which is a ministry of what? Of reconciliation. So that is our primary task. We have been called to a ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. In other words, restoring people, the, uh, the world, uh, you know, to favor, to, to Christ himself, restoring them. And he says, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us 
the word of reconciliation. In other words, not judging them according to their mistakes. Not judging them according to their wrongs. That's why Jesus came into the world. He came not to condemn, but to save the people. And we think we've come to judge the world, right? Jesus came to forgive their sins. Now we think, okay, now we, we're here to judge. No, he's given us what? He's given us a ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, we are now called to love. We have received the love of Christ. We have received the forgiveness of the Lord. And as we have received forgiveness for our wrongs and our messes that we made, right? The words that we've spoken, the people that we've heard, the destruction that we've sown. As we have been reconciled, as we have been forgiven, God comes. He takes out our old nature and He places His Holy Spirit. He places His nature within us. And what happens as you've received the forgiveness of the Lord, now you receive the ministry of reconciliation where you are now committed to the word of reconciliation. And that's why in the next verse, he says, not imputing their trespasses to them. The Amplified said, but cancelling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation. He's done what? He's committed to us the word of reconciliation. What is your job? What is my job? To reconcile. If you have the love of Christ, what's your purpose? To reconcile. Reconcile people to Christ so that their sins can be forgiven. I trust this is helping somebody. And that's why the Bible says in Romans 13 verse 8, Oh, no one, anything except to love one another. So uh, it says, For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. And the Amplified said, has fulfilled the law relating to one's fellow men, meeting all its requirements. So don't own anything to anybody. The only thing that we owe is what? Is love. And then you've met the requirements of the law. So in everything that we do, the only thing we need to owe people is to love them. And therefore we preach the gospel. We preach the good news because we don't want people to be lost and in a life of destruction. We love them. We see their potential. And now it says in verse 20, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Ambassadors of love. Representatives of Christ. When we go into the world, when you go into your workplace, when you go to the shopping mall, what are we? We are ambassadors. We are representatives. And here is a good thing about ambassadors. They get paid by the person whom they represent. They get looked after by the one whom they represent. So when the president sends out ambassadors to another country, he makes sure they got a home to stay in. He makes sure they get their clothes to wear. He makes sure that they have the means. And that's why Matthew chapter 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things that you need shall be added to you. But it's funny how people in the church, you know, they want God's stuff without doing their job. They want the benefits of the ambassador without being the ambassador. They don't represent Christ. They just want His car <laughs> and the health. They just want the benefits. It doesn't work like that. See, God will look after His own. God will look after His representatives. Now we come, Lord, help me. Please help me. I want a job. But why? Help me. I want a car. Why? So you can go on being your narcissistic, self-centered, selfish self, and everything is just about me. And you're so proud. You're even proud about being needy. You're even proud of being selfish. Please don't be proud of being needy because what you're saying is I'm a narcissist. Everything is about me. It's what I want. It's what I want. It's what I want. And here's the thing. As an ambassador, you get everything. God will add those things to you. And he says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. So we are ambassadors who's doing the work. God is pleading through us. 
And what is he saying? He says, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Because it is the Holy Spirit that pleads, that compels. When you see others, you see they need Christ. And what are we pleading? What's the news? What's the good news? I'm closing off. He says, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And here's the good news. Your sins are forgiven through Jesus Christ. If you receive him into your life, he will come. He will change you. He will transform you. He will make you a new creation. Give you a purpose that you can understand why you were born, that you can understand why you are alive. As long as you are seeking your own and your own and your own and you've got your own room and your own purpose, you're not going to understand. And that's why you have many Christians that are confused Christians. And that's why Paul says in Ephesians 3 verse 14, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He would grant you, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ might dwell in your hearts through faith that you're being rooted and grounded in what? In love. That's why you pray for your wife. That's what you pray for your husband. That's what you pray for your children. This is what you pray for yourself to be rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. And listen to this. He says, verse 18, may uh, be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Thus you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is incredible. It's when you know how much God loves you. You know that He is your shepherd. I shall not want. I am lacking nothing. I am in need of nothing. When you've experienced the love of Christ that surpasses all understanding, right? The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. You see, you will be filled with the fullness of God. And now in everything you are, in everything you do, you are now compelled to do what? You are compelled to love. And this is because of verse 20. It's now to him, to Christ, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power. This is the power of the love of Christ, right? That works in us. The Amplified said to do super abundantly, far above uh, all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. So if you still think and judge according to that human, human level of value, God says you can't even see what I see. You can't even fathom your dream compared to God's dream for you are at the bottom God says that what I want to do in and through you is above that which you can think or imagine. But what do we need to do? Well, all the preceding verses. And therefore we need a revelation of the love of Christ. How much God loves us. <laughs> Won't you just become aware of the presence of God here as you are listening to this word? What am I saying today? I'm saying that you are loved. You are loved. You are loved. And because you are loved and have a revelation of that love, now we can love. We are loved to love because of the love of God that compels us. The love of God that works in us and through us. It is the love of God that compels us in everything we are and in everything we do. And therefore where you are, just lift up your hands with me and say this prayer with me. Repeat after me and say, Dear Jesus, I need you in my life, in everything that I am, everything that I do. Thank you, Lord, for your love towards me. Thank you that I know I am a new creation. The old things, the old life, the old thinking, the old doing has passed away. 
Everything has become new. I'm a new creation. Lord, you have called me to be an ambassador, an ambassador of love, a representative of love. Lord, I'm ready to be used by you. Uh, uh, Lord, I'm compelled by love to love others, to help others. Thank you, Lord. The chains of sin have been broken over my life. And as from now, I am called to love others in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can we give a big shout and hallelujah this week? No matter what happens in your life, no matter the hatred, no matter what comes against you, you know, envy, jealousy, hatred, whatever, you are compelled to love because of the forgiveness you've received, because of the love of Christ you've received. That you know what? It is that love that you have for other people's souls that will conquer the destruction in their life, that will conquer the bondage and the work of the enemy in their life and break it when you love like Christ's love. God bless you.